Hello everyone, Cindy here with Monarch Mama DIY. On my channel, I like to bring you the best tips and tools for creating beautiful home decor on a budget. If you're new here, I hope you'll consider sticking around by hitting that subscribe button. Today, I have my top 12 brand new budget decor DIYs for you. And today I'm going to be doing a special giveaway. When you comment your favorite project, also tell me how many different Starbucks mugs you saw in today's video. For today's first project, I'm going to show you how to take Jenga blocks or the tumbling tower blocks from Dollar Tree and make a plant stand. You're going to need 14 of whatever size blocks you're going to use. I decided I'm going to paint my Jenga blocks black to make a larger plant stand. And then I'm going to do the antique wax on the tumbling tower blocks to make a smaller version. So here I have all 14 of my Jenga blocks painted black. I'm going to take two of them and I'm going to glue them together facing each other like a cookie okay one of those like wafer cookies then i'm going to take four pairs of two and i'm going to use my wood glue and glue them together just so that they are two blocks long then i'm going to do the same thing for my smaller version using my tumbling tower blocks glue two of the 14 blocks together like a sandwich cookie and then use eight more that I'm going to make four pairs of two. And there you can see those. Now, for my smaller version, I like to use these cans from Canned Chicken, and I'm taking some of this gorgeous contact paper from Dollar Tree. I cut a strip so that it will um, fit top to bottom and just go around our can. It's an easy way to just give it a little bit more of a decorative touch. Then one of these squares, these come four in a pack at Dollar Tree, fits pretty perfectly in that can. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just add some of my Spanish moss on the top. I really like using this. You get a lot more for your dollar than the brighter green reindeer moss. Just put a little bit of glue on top of that foam and then stick down that Spanish moss. You can trim it whatever you'd like so it looks nice and neat. Then I'm gonna take three of these succulents. These are most likely from Dollar Tree, um, just that I've been collecting the last couple years whenever they have them, and arrange them, and you have a nice little succulent arrangement. Now, coming back to our blocks, these two that we glued together are kind of going to be um, the base. And then we're going to take four more and just glue them like this so it's like a plus sign coming out of those two center blocks and then you can do the same thing with your tumbling tower blocks for the small version now that our four pairs are dry we're going to glue them one at a time on the sides so these are going to be what gives us our height on our plant stand and also holds whatever pot or bowl you put inside so i'm doing these one at a time and there you can see all four of them on the two together are in the center there and you can see um, how you can make two different sizes just using the tumbling tower blocks or a Jenga game. I find these all the time at the thrift stores. So this is our first project for today's video. For our second project, I'm using one of these six inch square canvases and one of these floating shelves. Also some of the super jumbo craft sticks. So I really love this canvas and I've wanted to try a reverse canvas and I just have to give a shout out to Deb for sending me this awesome heavy duty staple remover. She saw me struggling in that last video where I was using a mini screwdriver and pliers. Thanks so much. Now I did notice this is not wood in these canvases. It's like that particle board, so it cracks really easily. Since that was gonna be on the outside now, I did go ahead and fill in some of those cracks with the spackle from Dollar Tree. 
go ahead then and cut out the center part of the canvas. We won't need all that extra that was wrapped around the frame. Once you sand down where the speckle was, I'm gonna go ahead and use my Waverly chalk paint in ink and paint that canvas or the uh, frame to go on top of my canvas. Now just putting some hot glue all around that. We'll set it down so now it's on the front of the canvas graphic and just gives it a nice framed out look. I didn't quite get the frame exactly on there, but it's no big deal. Just go ahead and trim any extra canvas that's sticking out. Now, I, this is for my craft show, so I wanted it to be finished looking on the back. So I'm just taking some of these jumbo craft sticks, measuring where I need to cut them, and I'm going to paint these and then glue them to the back of the canvas, just like I said, so it is a little bit more of a nice finished look. And then once all of those are dry, I'm just going to use my hot glue and go ahead and layer those on the back so they have kind of a, a shiplap look on the back of the project. And here's what it looks like now on the front and the back. You saw there was a little bit of space at the bottom, but that's okay because taking this really awesome floating shelf from Dollar Tree that can hang on the wall it comes with the hardware i'm going to attach the canvas now to the back of the shelf and just using some e6000 and i believe i used hot glue also i'm just going to line that up and let that dry sufficiently this could stand on a table like this or you could hang it on a wall i just think this is a really cool way to take two dollar tree items and make something really beautiful out of it this would be an awesome gift i will be looking for more of these shelves and the little canvases for today's third project i'm using a pizza pan one of these kind of shiny tote bags and one of these unfinished wood butterflies. I did go ahead and take my pizza pan and sprayed around it with that summer squash color yellow on the back. Usually I do my pizza pan wreaths on the front. I decided to try the back this time. And so I just cut a circle using the pizza pan as a template out of this really pretty bag. Now I am showing Mod Podge, but this did not work. I think because of the shiny, finish on the front of the bag and it's kind of I don't know it it just did not stick to the pizza pan with Mod Podge so I did end up using wood glue now I grabbed this of course my name is Monarch Mom DIY so I decided I wanted this butterfly but didn't know what I was going to use it for I decided to go ahead and paint it with some of my paint markers and I'm going to attach it to this pizza pan wreath somehow so there it is all painted and then i did have to go around the uh, sides there just to use some hot glue and get that tote bag to lay down flat so that i can then edge it out with some of the white nautical rope so just be real careful not to burn your fingers and then I'm going to um, add this butterfly. I decided to just use one wood cube instead of leaving those three slats of wood that were on it. So we'll attach that there up at the top in just a minute. Now going back around that little space to the edge, I'm using some of the white nautical rope and I'm kind of twisting it as I go to get it as tight as possible going all the way around. I'm gonna use another small piece to be the hanger for the wreath. So just getting those ends to stay together and then attaching it on the back with some more hot glue. And then my last step is just to add my little butterfly. I love how I was able to use the blue and the pink from the graphic and just make that three dimensional piece to pop out. This is very simple. I used, we'll say four items from Dollar Tree, the pan, the bag, the butterfly, and the rope. And you can make something very beautiful and cheerful. For this next one, I'm gonna use a couple pieces of a five gallon paint stick, some florals, floral foam, 
a set of these three mini clay pots and some tumbling tower blocks. All right, so I had these cut from a different project, but they ended up being the perfect length for three of these pots to fit in. I'm taking four tumbling tower blocks to make each side end of our box. And then I'm going to do four sets of four for the bottom. I hope that makes sense. So I'm using, what's that, 24 tumbling tower blocks, gluing all those together in six sets of four. And while those are drying, I'm gonna take my white Waverly chalk paint and go ahead and just give each of my pots a coat of that white chalk paint. Now you can see I did paint my tumbling tower blocks with my black Waverly chalk paint. And then once those are dry, I'm gluing four of the sets together on the bottom and then the other two sets, one on each end standing up. Then once the black part of my tray is all dry, I'm going to take my two paint stick pieces that I painted with mineral chalk paint and glue those to be the front and back or just the long sides of my tray. You can see they're a little bit longer than the bottom, but that's okay. I think it looks just as cute. So I'm just attaching those with hot glue and pressing them down really well to make sure they are firmly in place. Next, I decided to take this Hobby Lobby gingham ribbon and I'm just gonna go around the top part of each of my three pots just to add a little bit more of a decorative farmhouse touch without a lot of cost. I love these when they're 50% off, I get each roll for a dollar. Then taking just a small piece of the floral foam, putting some hot glue in the bottom of the pot and pressing that floral foam into place then a little bit more hot glue, and this time I am using the bright green reindeer moss in each pot as well. And then here you can see our finished product, just adding a little bit of the lavender picks that are at Dollar Tree this spring. For project number five, I'm using three of these hexagon picture frames, four six inch wood dowels, and some more of that beautiful contact paper from Dollar Tree. So when I saw these, I really wanted to try to make some sort of shelf or tiered tray with them. So I'm removing everything from the frame and then I'm gonna go ahead and all three pieces of glass, I'm going to cover with this gorgeous contact paper. So you wanna keep it as flat as possible. And then when you're putting it on the glass, just try to smooth out any possible air bubbles while you are pressing it down. Then go ahead and trim the excess. And then I took the backing from one of them. You saw it had that stand on it and it wasn't gonna look very nice when I took it off. So I had some spare cardboard from the back of a picture frame and I made three of these just so I had a nice looking uh, backing for my picture frames. Now I think there's some hexagon mirrors too at some Dollar Trees. You could totally do this project with those as well. Now I have four of these six inch dowel pieces. I'm just going to paint those black so they all kind of match. And then you can see I have two of the frames uh, lying there kind of across from each other on a flat side. And I'm going to take two dowels for each frame. And you can see I'm using E6000 to glue them right there in those corners. So there's both of the bottom frames with those in place. Then I'm taking my third hexagon and using some hot glue on the tops of the dowels now. And I did let these sit that E6000 needs to set for like 24 hours. Then I'm going to place this third one as evenly as possible as I can on top. 
Now I noticed that it was a little flimsy because of that space there. So I'm taking three more of my jumbo craft sticks, painting them black and you can see I glued them there across the bottom. And I am so thrilled with how this turned out you guys. This was three frames from Dollar Tree and a couple wood dowels and craft sticks. So I really love how, I think this was my favorite one from this video, but you guys, we got lots more to go. All right, my sixth one for this video, I'm taking one of these arched windows, one of the wood crates, a wood circle, and then all the floral stuff again. So taking the little graphic card, it was cardboard off of there, and peeling away that glue, I'm going to paint my crate with the black chalk paint just so both the window and the crate have the same base color. Now I'm gonna use that wood circle instead of that cardboard thing that was there. So I am gonna paint that white and then also dry brush white now on my black crate and then a little bit at the top. And then I'm also going to dry brush white on the window. Now this is plastic, but it's a really good quality plastic and it even has a backing. I thought this looked really fun and aged and just farmhouse by just adding this touch of dry brushing the white paint on the front and of course also on the sides. I did not worry about getting in the sides of all those little spaces in the window. So now our two base pieces match each other Coming back to my white circle and I have some Scrabble tiles to spell home. I'm gonna make that little leafy arch there that was on the cardboard one and I'm going to just draw that on the top and bottom of this white circle with a black Sharpie marker. Then once that was done, I went ahead and used wood glue to glue my Scrabble tiles down to the circle. Now coming back to the crate and the window, I'm going to put the crate on that back edge of, sorry, the window on the back edge of the crate, but I realized that's probably gonna be a little flimsy. So we're using, again, another one of these jumbo craft sticks. I painted it black and I'm hot gluing it across that seam where the window and the crate meet, just to give it a li little bit more stability. And now all we have to do is put in some hot glue, add some floral foam, we'll do the floral moss, and then add some florals to our little window crate flower box. Once the floral foam and moss were in there, I wanted to go ahead and glue my little home circle before I put the florals in. Wanted to make sure it was up high enough so the florals didn't cover it over. And I just think this really elevated the look of this from the cardboard. Then you can see I added some blue and white florals. You can use whatever you have on hand. And now I'm taking some of this burlap ribbon from Dollar Tree. It was a little too wide. So all I did was cut off the wired edges and fray the ends a little bit or the sides so that it was not quite as wide and just fits really nice, wrapping it all the way around the crate in the center. And here's the finished look. You can see I also took some of that Dollar Tree gingham ribbon and went around the crate again in the center of the burlap ribbon. Okay, project number seven. I'm using one of these wood and metal picture frames, a salt shaker, some jute twine, some paint, and some florals of your choice. Now, before we try to paint the salt shaker, I am going to put one layer of Mod Podge on it. It just, I think, helps tone down the shine and also helps the paint stick a little better. So then once that's dry, go ahead and I'm using white, 
Of course, you can paint these whatever color you want, just giving it one light coat of the paint. And then I did sand it a little bit when it was dry, just with that sanding sponge from Dollar Tree. Going around the skinny part, the round part of the salt shaker, I'm just attaching some jute twine and then wrapping the rest of the way up to the top of the salt shaker. Then taking some more of that Hobby Lobby gingham ribbon, I'm going to tie a knot around the top part where I just put the jute twine and just cutting the ends to make a little cute decorative knot on the top of our salt shaker. Then I went ahead and glued the salt shaker to the frame with E6000 and hot glue combination. Then taking a little piece of this jute twine with the wire inside, I'm going to hot glue this hanger to the back of the frame. It does have a stand so it can either hang on the wall or can stand on a table like this. And you can put whatever greenery or florals inside that you'd like. You could even put some water and have live flowers. For project number eight, I'm using a couple of these wood arrow signs, some of the craft wood cubes, some chalk paint, and a little bit, again, of those rub-on transfers. So once you remove the string hangers from these arrows, you will want to fill in the holes with the liquid spackle and let that dry. I decided to paint my houses white and then I'm also going to use these cubes for the roof. So I needed, I believe it was 15, oh gosh, I can't remember now how many cubes I used, but um, yeah, I think I did 15 for the shorter houses and 13 for the taller house to make the roof line. Now I just went on Google search and put in the wording that I wanted uh, my houses to say and printed those out and then using my carbon tracing paper you can see there how easy it is to trace the printout and then fill them in with black sharpie or a paint marker. I realized too that my houses were going to need some sort of base in order for them to be able to stand up. So for each house, I made two lines of three that I'm going to glue to the front and back of the base there of my house. So here are my cubes that I painted with truffle chalk paint. And now I'm just lining those up on the top of the arrow so that it looks like a roof and there's one of our cute little houses and then we'll do the other two as well. So here are those bases that I said three tumbling tower blocks and I did paint them black and then just putting a little hot glue on the front and back right at the bottom I'm going to basically sandwich the house between these two stands so that our house will be able to stand up. Now the one that says welcome to our home I did the wording too far down so I'm going to have to repaint that one but here you can see both of the other two houses with the cubes for the roof and the stand at the bottom. I decided for that space there at the top just to add one of these little greenery rub-ons that were from the same pack I used in our last video. And here's what our finished houses look like. You can see I did glue just a little bit of greenery also at the bottom. And I really hope you guys are liking these projects. Please make sure you let me know which one is your favorite when we get to the end. Project number nine, I'm using three packs of the five gallon paint stir sticks and one of these garden fences. Also some antique wax. So I love these cutters. They're so great for florals and they make easy work of these garden fences. Uh, there is a link for these in my Amazon storefront under crafting tools. So what I'm doing with the four arches here is I'm cutting them apart so that they are all the individual pieces. And I'm just cutting here right down the center 
so the two sides are a little skinny and then even the ones that were on the ends I'm trimming them a little bit so that it matches all of the other sides now I'm making two of these so I have four long paint sticks I just cut them right where the handle starts to go in and then those other four pieces are about nine inches long. I'm gonna do my antique wax on these just to really bring out that beautiful wood grain of the paint sticks. Now to attach my four pieces together, I am just taking four tumbling tower blocks and on the back side, I'm gluing them across the seam where each piece joins together and it does give it a little bit of space that will be between the wall and the piece of artwork. I'm going to use two arches on each of these uh, pieces and I just glued them to the back of the wood using a hot glue and I just really love how simple and elegant these turned out using one garden fence and some paint sticks. Our project number 10, I'm using one of these wider house shelves, some scrap of paper, some of these push pins with the hook, some ribbon, and one of these chalkboard tags. So it's pretty easy to separate the house frame from the backing. So once you get that off and take off any excess paper, take your matte finish Mod Podge and apply that generously, and then spray your scrap of paper a little bit on the back and get that down to cover that house shape. I apologize profusely for the spray bottle being in the camera shot. It'll move shortly. Now for the frame, I'm gonna go around the front edge with some white chalk paint just to make that pop and blend in with the gingham scrap of paper. Once the Mod Podge is dry, just take your craft knife and simply cut around. The excess will come right off and you'll have a beautiful background that you can then glue your house frame back on. I decided to add a little bit more to this house. I was going to take two four inch pieces of the five gallon paint stick Go ahead and paint those with the antique wax and take off the excess and then I'm going to just hot glue those to the top of my little house shelf. Next I'm taking three of these push pins with the hook on them and I'm spacing those out and then using my little hammer to nail those in so they're nice and secure. It did make a small crack in the bottom part there of the house, but it didn't bother me because I really liked the idea of having those hooks in there. So then taking one of these chalkboard tags from Dollar Tree, I did kind of paint in the white edging there and then just wrote keys with my white paint marker. And then I'm going to add a small little gingham bow where there was a hole on the tag. I'm gonna glue one tumbling tower block to the back of the tag and then glue that to the back of the house just to make it stand out a little bit from the back. And it says keys. This is a great little place that you can hang some keys in your kitchen or wherever you come in from driving. And here's our finished look. I did add a sawtooth hanger to the back so that whoever purchases this for my craft show can hang it on the wall and it will be secure. And our 11th project is I'm taking another one of these pennant signs, a beautiful spring gift bag I found, some Mod Podge, and some wood beads. So this is a lot like a project I did with the sunflower wall stickers, but I'm just showing you an even simpler way you can do this. Take that pennant sign, and again, I painted that top part black so it would match our project a little bit better. Then taking the gift bag, you're just going to cut around the side for the picture that you want to use on your sign. So I did trim off the top part where the holes were, and then I'm going to put 
Mod Podge on my pennant sign once I scrape off the glitter. We want it nice and flat. Put on some Mod Podge and then go ahead and lay the piece of gift bag down and let that dry completely on the sign. Now this was a little short, so I pulled it down to the bottom so it covered the points. And then you'll see what I'm gonna do there at the top to fill in that gap. Once it's dry, just trim it with your craft knife. I did decide to go back over the top with a layer of Mod Podge just to make sure it was nice and secure. And our little handy dandy Dollar Tree gingham ribbon is going to cover up where the top of our gift bag doesn't quite reach that black strip of wood at the top of the pennant. And I just decided to wrap that ribbon all the way around. To make sure the edges of the gift bag were nice and flush with the sign, I did use my sanding sponge to go all the way around the sign. I found this metal word from last year. You could write on this or print something out, but I just added that to the front of my sign. Thought that would be a nice touch. Then like I did before, I took one side of the hanger out of the staples and I'm going to add some more of these wood beads that I have just going back and forth between the black and the natural wood color. And here's our completed project, another version of the pennant hanging sign. You can find all sorts of gorgeous gift bags at Dollar Tree that you can do this with as well. Now my final project is not a Dollar Tree project, but it is a great way that you can make personalized gifts or craft show items. So I bought a pack of these journals from Amazon and I'm using some of my uh, Maker Studio stencils. I'm going to personalize these with a scripture or a little spiritual quote here. So peeling off the, this is Be Brave from Joshua 1.9. I'm centering this on this five inch by eight inch journal. And I'm using some of our gel art ink. This is a metallic gold that I'm going to scrape um, the squares going around the outside there. And then also those little um, hearts, they kind of look like sideways hearts there. Then I'm gonna come back in with my white gel art ink and do Be Brave and the Joshua 1-9. And my favorite part when you peel it off. So satisfying to see that gorgeous image now on this journal. So here are just a couple of the ones I made. I am gonna make about, I think I bought 10 of these um, using different colors and different spiritual quotes to make these prayer journals. Well, you guys, thanks so much for hanging in there with me. I hope you really enjoyed these 12 budget DIYs. I was really happy to bring them to you today. So make sure you let me know which one's your favorite. Give this video a big thumbs up. Share it if you would. That would mean the world to me. And also, if you want to be entered in the giveaway, how many Starbucks mugs did you see?